I'll, I'll see if Red and AJ are ready to go right now. Who is Sathu? Sathu is a rank 21s player, I believe. Yeah, it is ready. Like a lot of the guys who are in the tournament today, we got Ty, uh, Killerican, Sathu, AJ. They might not be as known to you guys, but I'm pretty sure that they're all high rated at the moment. Let's just scroll down and see. We see Sathu's 18, AJ 19, Killerican 21. Ty's been higher. Ty is now 33. But I've seen those guys all close to top 10, if not in top 10. And uh, if you, you know, if you split this into regions, we've got Europe, a bunch like Europe, 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 Europe again, Europe, Europe. Like a lot of these guys, this Miancha is European. A lot of these guys are European. Outlast is Australian. So really, if you're looking for NA ranked ones players, these are the guys to go to. Yeah, we're ready to get started here. If AJ, oh, I keep clicking the wrong button. If AJ doesn't like the server because the ping is too bad, then we're going to um, try re-rolling it. We should be able to find a good USC server, you know, in not too many attempts, hopefully. It shouldn't take too long to get this started. Boy, turn the ads off. They are off. That's interesting. AJ's saying it just needs to be not six numbers. I don't know what on earth that means. Uh, I mean, this is USE 10. So I guess this is a good server for him. That's how he, that's how he knows if the server's going to be good. I'll have to ask him about that later. Find out what, what he exactly means. Wave dash by Red just to make sure that he's on the ground when he reaches this boost after the flip. I will highlight this is actually pretty smart because if Red had done two front flips there to get to that boost, then he would have um, probably landed on the wall after the second flip. So that did make sense. He wasn't able to follow up with a, a save, but I like the approach. It's good use of a dash. Bad approach on this shot. Very linear dribble. He's only able to redirect the ball away from the net, which is not what he wants. Very bad start for Red, in fact. And he's said himself in the past that he tilts under pressure. He's certainly under pressure now. The numbers mean it's running on a VM, not a dedicated server. It's not dedicated, not dedicated wham. Red isn't red. Yeah, it kind of triggers me when red is blue. At least he's got the red boost, if nothing else. Bit of a bean moment there from AJ. Should have been able to clear that ball. Our virtual servers. Server with our physical servers. What is a virtual server? Twitch chat. Educate me. I'm a complete technical and hardware noob. What is a virtual server? Explain. What is a dedicated server? Everybody who hasn't seen the dedicated Wham video, go watch it. Nice 50-50 by AJ. Not the best follow-up shot, but he did well to put Red under pressure. Oh, on the boost seal as well. Red is in a bit of trouble here. A virtual machine has less hardware. So that's why some of the US servers are trash when you when you play from EU. Will this be the same for me when I'm when I'm queuing US East servers from Europe? And it, it just feels like the server sucks even though the ping is okay? Is that what it is? There's just a bunch of fake servers. Sionix with a whole bunch of fake servers. Nice. This is actually approaching a 180 BFF from AJ. Red could have perhaps been a bit more aggressive there. He's very close to the play. Right, let's see. Let's read this out for you guys. And this is interesting to me. More interesting than a kickoff goal. Virtual web servers are a very popular way of providing low-cost web hosting services. Instead of requiring a separate computer for each server, dozens of virtual servers can co-reside in the same computer. In most cases, performance is not affected on each website, and each website behaves as it as if it is being served by a dedicated server. I'm saying dedicated on purpose, by the way. However, if too many virtual servers reside in the same computer, or if one virtual server starts hogging resources, web pages will be delivered more slowly. So obviously, in this context, we're reading about web pages, but I guess Psyonix have uh, decided to cheap out on some of their servers, so that's why some of them are trash, and other ones are much, much better. We need to be spending more of that crate money on servers, I guess. I, it's funny, I did an AMA on... Um, the Reddit Discord today, the Rocket League Reddit Discord, and uh, me and myself and League of Rockets did. And so many of the questions are just asking technical questions that are not at all related to us, and they're actually just more 
relevant to psionics because people think that I actually have an influence in what psionics do. Spoiler alert, I don't. I've got exactly zero influence. I'm less influential than their cleaners in their decisions. Their cleaners probably have quite a lot of influence, in fact. Threat, because they've got leverage. They say, hey, if you don't give us a raise, I'm going to take a dump in the in the sink, in the men's bathroom. That's not nice when people do that. Meanwhile, sorry for the massive tangent, this has been a pretty bad game for Red. AJ has been looking, for one thing, more Red than Red. And he's uh, been reading Red's plays with ease, ever, except the, the first goal that Red scored. Actually, the first goal was just an unforced error. Apart from the last goal that Red scored, Red hasn't been able to cause any problems uh, for AJ, which is a problem for him. Because in ones, if you're behind, you want to be playing proactively, doing things that your opponent can't answer. There we go. Like so. Red finally able to get a hard read on what AJ is doing. And he goes for what is pretty much a blind flick. He sees AJ turning, but he has to, he has to do a lot of assuming there. A lot of stuff going on behind the ball for Red in that situation. Because he wasn't able to get a line of approach that put AJ in his line of sight. It's something that you want to consider when you're doing your bounce dribbling or your ball carrying. Another great, just stand, he doesn't even move, he just stands still 50-50. Second time that AJ's done this, he just plants his car right behind the ball and waits for Red to go past. See Red motionless after the fact, he's not happy with how that 50-50 has gone. Not at all happy. Uh, Fireburner 9010. That's one reason why I wonder why Fireburner doesn't play more ones. If Fireburner really is the 50 50 god, then surely ones is his, his scene. That's got to be the place where he's going to have the most success because force 50 50 and ones you, and you win at 9010, you're probably going to score. And honestly, I saw Fireburner a couple of Fireburner's games at Gold Rush, a couple of his ones games, and he did not look bad at all, which isn't a surprise. He is a start veteran where ones was, well, 1v1 played a much bigger part in start vets. Day-to-day uh, -day life than it does in a lot of Rocket League pros who just don't enjoy ones at all. Rocket League pro pros, quite a soft breed. They, you know, lose one kickoff goal and they're tilted. Maybe in the future that will no longer be the case. <laughs> Great pickup by AJ. Drives across the corner boost pod, just hoping it'll spawn, and it appears as he's about to leave it. Feels pretty good when that happens. So, no ceiling reset for AJ. It's going to take him out of the game pretty far. Red not able to capitalize. I like the Red's holding on to this boost, if nothing else. But AJ's just looked like the faster of the two players. He's been matching Red's speed whenever Red does decide to accelerate. And there we go. Ceiling reset this time. This is dangerous for Red. What a shot by AJ. Denied by the crossbar at the far post. Looks like Red is going to get one counterattack goal. And AJ has to be careful. Might be a little bit too early to start throwing in these montage goals because Red is only down by three with 51 seconds left. If kickoff starts to go in Red's favor, if he can make a cheeky little adaptation at the end of the game, then he will create three chances. Looks like it's going to go the other way, though. AJ just taking away all that hard work that Red's done with a kickoff goal of his own. Red not very central on that impact. AJ having a very good day at the office. I'm not sure if AJ hit top 10 in ones recently, but I've seen him in there before. I've also seen Red top 10 in the past. Looking on point. Nice save by Red. Blocking the point blank range. Rebound attempt. This looks like it will be game. With every second that goes by, the likelihood of Red's comeback is diminishing from unlikely to absolutely nothing. 10-5. That will be game one for AJ. Red on the ropes. Best of three. He won't be out should he drop this series, but he will need to come back two games in a row if he wants to proceed into the winner's half of Swiss bracket. AJ just getting the countdown timer started by touching the ball here. Super fun fact. The countdown timer does start if you wait long enough, even without touching the ball. I believe. I believe. Maybe somebody in Twitch chat can confirm if that's the case. But essentially a forfeit by Red. AJ shooting the long range. Shot on his own net. And then booming red for good measure. 1-0.
to both. Well, both these guys are actually making their debut uh, tournament appearances. A lot of debut appearances today. In fact, the only uh, returning players, or the only returning player, is Lethemir from last month's uh, NA tournaments. We got seven new players, which is pretty cool. I'm glad to be able to give these guys a little bit of the spotlight they might not usually get. It's pretty, pretty good to do. It's like five seconds before the timer starts. Yeah. Looks like the um, oh, red, red chose blue team, dude. He chose it. What is that? He was the first person to choose, and he just went straight into blue. Come on, dude. Surely he should know that this is not going to work. Oh, AJ's got a very good understanding of what red wants to do uh, right after kickoffs. He's coming out on top of a lot of kickoff situations. Tries to stand still 50-50 again. Doesn't work, but he gets a great recovery bump. Well played by AJ. He won't get the boost in his back corner, so he's still under a lot of pressure. Red will not be too disappointed with this result. With every crossover past AJ's goal, he's getting more and more space to work with. AJ's getting completely boost starved. Red just has to choose how he wants to try and score. I'm not a fan of that last uh, decision, though. He could have dribbled the ball back to the midfield and looked for a more consistent um, strategy. Ball carry as opposed to the bounce dribble for Red. Pretty tame shot at the end. AJ could have shot that on net as well. He might still be able to. In fact, yes, he will. Red has not even bothered to recover. And 1-0 AJ just over a minute in. I've got to criticize Red for that entire last segment of play. He passed the ball to AJ, essentially, when AJ was in goal with a very high risk, high difficulty wall shot. And then he didn't set up his follow-up dribble play very well either, not getting much speed on the ball. And now he's in a lot of trouble. AJ has the position to pick up that corner boost if he wanted it. He's Forfeited that positioning by centering the ball. Still not a terrible position for AJ to be in. It might be about to get worse. He's doing well to pop the ball quite high there. Doesn't want to leave it in a low position in front of his goal. And it's not looking good for Red. I have to say he's got to change something. He needs to be more consistent with getting shots on the net. This is the same problem that Prime Thunder had against Killer Rican. Just not able to create enough shots to really win the game. We just saw the the what what used to be a half flip. Oh, another nearly demo for AJ. Looks like Red will escape his wrath and equalize. He will. It was close from AJ on that demo. If he steered a bit more left, he would have had it. In fact, he had the speed. He just needed to aim where Red was about to be, not where Red was. This is looking better though for Red. He wasn't out the game in terms of score, just strategically looking uh, shaky. Still though, with all of this ball carrying that Red is doing, it's making it very easy for AJ to mix up his defense and get a lot of possession turnovers for free. What I, what, what I mean by that is Red is dribbling the ball straight at AJ so much that every time AJ's challenging, is coming from a blind spot. Right here, we see AJ coming from the side. Red scores immediately. Red just needs to try and create more chances like this, where he can see where AJ is coming from, or he knows that AJ is not hiding behind the ball and might be faking a challenge. A bit unfortunate for Red landing on AJ. Oh, that would have been nasty if AJ was able to find that tight angle. Pseudo air dribble. Good flick by Red. And the rebound as well. What a great read on this bounce. I like the setup as well. See, what Red does differently here and what he's been failing up until now is as he was setting up that flick, he had AJ in his sights. You could see what his opponent was doing. He knew that there was no challenge in coming, so he could just wait his time, choose when to flick, where to flick from. The rebound was very well done. Understanding that the ball was going to bounce straight down is not an automatic thing for most players in Rocket League. A rare sight to see somebody commit so hard for a rebound in ones at least. 
He'd do a little bit too good on that flick. Red is still in a bit of trouble. He's had a boost. It is going to kill him. He was looking for a much better first touch than that. Has Red gone? Oh, Red. AJ's first touch wasn't as good as it could have been. If he just caught this ball and had it rolling instead of bouncing, he would have been able to shoot this open net a bit earlier. But Red's gone for the boost and left the net wide open. Anyway. Some people in chat talking about the that these players are both very good at tilting. Well, we will see. Red, I've seen tilt in tournaments before. AJ, I've never seen play a tournament. Red again getting a good uh, upright to the rescue. It's well done to position himself in an area in the box where he was ready for just about any rebound there. Inside of the post or otherwise, he would have been in position to take that ball under control. Are we going to see a game three? I would not mind seeing one, just because you guys are all telling me that these guys tilt in tournaments. And game three is where we're more likely to see that than uh, than game two. Although if Red is going to tilt here, or if he's going to lose, he'll certainly call it a throw. It doesn't look like that's going to happen, though. AJ's defense is crumbling. He was mixing in some good challenges earlier in the game, but this has just turned into Red scoring at will. Uh, AJ only tilts and rumble ones apparently. So having a quick look to see where Red is before going up for this aerial. Knew he had some time to wait for the ball to come down. Has been AJ scoring the majority of the kickoff goals. He's had more of those than his opponent. But I would love to see Red playing a possession game from this point onwards. It looks like that's not going to be his strategy of choice. He has to be quite careful. I think he did get the boost pick up there, so he should be just fine. Reg, at, the, at this point, should just be trying to deny a goal from AJ. If he doesn't want to tilt, then that is that is the style of play that will suit him the best if he's in the lead by two. AJ needs to find two shots, not just two goals. Good jump over Red, but Red was already on the recovery after going for that bump play. Looks like he's going to tie up the series, and we're about to find out who will tilt more out of AJ and Red? Hopefully neither of them tilt. Hopefully we just see very close and fought out series. Oh my goodness. What is this from AJ? That is insane. How did he keep that ball up? That was ridiculous. Popping the ball at least three times there with the one landing. Game three. Red versus AJ. AJ the higher ranked player, but Red looking like he's more in control of the last game. Certainly the player who has the momentum on his side. That was a ridiculous keepy up ability by AJ at the end of the game. But I really feel like whoever starts off game three the best should be able to win this as we saw AJ leading from start to finish of game one. Red after equalizing game two really always looking like the favorite. AJ, good awareness of where the ball is going to be. Don't know what you guys think about this red lightning trail. I think it's one of the more um, underwhelming lightning trails of the bunch. Oh, what on earth happened to Red's car here? We need to take another look at this and see if he flopped or if he just got screwed. Oh, yeah, he jumped back. So I knew something had gone wrong. I was curious to see if the ball messed him up when it landed on him, but it looks like he just jumped by mistake should be able to tie it up here and he will what a save says AJ who again I upon it is in the it sparkles oh yeah oh you're right but either way crimson lightning sucks don't buy crimson lightning go for pink lightning green lightning the forest green lightning is very good um, don't know what other lightnings are good but I, I got crimson lightning and it's not that good crimson flamethrower though holy you want the most red boost in the world? Get Crimson Flamethrower. It's so cool. I love it. It's another good 50 by AJ. Red having to recover inside his own net just to stay in the game. Nice shot by AJ. 
I like that he's going for a shot here and not a mind game. Lots of players these days from this sort of position, they just jump up and then they try and float the ball down into the bottom right corner. But just having confidence to shoot that just under the crossbar is good to see from AJ. It's one of the most nerve-wracking things in Rocket League when you're about to take a tight angle shot um, and you're worried that you'll hit the post or the crossbar. AJ being sure not to waste any boost. Bit panicky by AJ, honestly, to keep hitting the ball back to red when there's no real danger. Looks like the pressure might get to red, and it will. Red should be dealing with this a lot better. Double what a save for himself in the chat. Letting the ball bounce off the wall there was not a necessity. Red could have stopped that from happening. He could have stopped that from happening. That's something a that Devo hates to let happen. He doesn't like letting the ball bounce off his own back wall. And we see why. AJ with another solid shot from the side. Red is in trouble. This is looking more and more like game one with every passing minute. Have you heard about Black Ion? It's basically invisible. You can't tell if your opponent is boosting. Can You, you can probably hear them quite well though, right? Oh dear, Red, what is happening? The goals are bleeding in uh, at quite a fast rate. He needs to try to stabilize sooner rather than later. This is getting dangerous. AJ getting more and more comfortable, almost scoring a sixth goal. But more important than the score is often the time in 1v1. Red has plenty time left this game to create four goals. He's going to be so tilted if AJ scores here, though. That was so fortunate to land like he did. Looks like AJ will score. Nice nice job on the finish. But Red is going to be pretty mad that AJ just failed a flick and then he was still able to recover and take Red out of the game. Red got juked pretty hard. But it was not the plan that AJ had when he started the flick maneuver. If somebody could pull that off consistently in Rocket League, that would be great though. Just miss a flick, land on the ground right after and pop the ball to the side. If somebody can master that, then credit to you, you're going to score lots of goals and tilt lots of opponents. Not a fan of uh, AJ's pretty all-in ability there. Like I said, the score is very one-sided, but there's a lot of time left. Oh my goodness, what a flick from almost stationary and almost zero boost, literally zero boost. That is incredible from AJ to get that much power. Perfect shot, well played. From zero boost and hardly moving. That was perfect control. Red did tell me that he thought AJ was the best flicker in America. Oh, baby. Another slightly fortuitous goal by AJ, but he's been rewarded for being the more proactive player and for winning almost every kickoff. That's a little bit fortunate. I would hate to be red right now, as he does trail 8 to FF, FF20, FF15 in more recent times. I think uh, you, the forfeit in League of Legends is now available at 15 minutes into the game. Isn't it great that Rock League, you can just forfeit on five seconds in? You can forfeit before the kickoff. It's wonderful. So good. Sometimes uh, you'll play a game in twos or, you know, well, it's usually solo twos. If you're playing by yourself and you get a teammate and he thinks that you, uh, you, you're the reason that you lost. Like, whether you are or not doesn't matter. But there are teammates in twos who think that you're the reason why they lost the game. And as soon as you match up with them again in the next game, they just hit vote to forfeit. And you could be like, sure, forfeit. <laughs> One time I was playing twos by myself. And me and some random guy barely lost the game. We, I mean, it was close. It was very close. I'm talking, you know, one goal, maybe overtime. Whatever happened, you know, something silly happened at the end of the game. And I think I probably just missed a save. And I was like, oh, pff, okay, whatever. Next game. And uh, I get into the next game and it's the same guy. And of course he finished off the game spamming what savers or whatever. Try and get inside my head. But we get, we get into the next game. And it's the same guy, and he just like votes to forfeit. So I was like, okay, and I, you know, vote to forfeit. We left the game. Queued up again. It was him again. He votes to forfeit. I vote to forfeit. We left the game. We forfeited three games in a row. It wasn't all against the same uh, opponents, but I was just thinking to myself, this is what boosting looks like. <laughs> this is, are we win trading? 
I was just, you know, not taking any of his... I, I, I wasn't going to play a game with this guy to um, if he wasn't going to... Uh, or if he was just going to vote to forfeit. I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to play a game with this guy. That's just not going to work out. Red calling the early GG, though. He knows that this is going to be too much to come back from, so that's going to be 2-1 for AJ. The right side of the bracket has triumphed yet again. This is the same as uh, the Europe tournament. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to continue like that, but we'll see. AJ progressing to round two of Swiss with a win under his belt. But before we can move on to round two of Swiss, I'm hoping that Moses comes back. He's currently away. He said, uh, and I'll quote: uh, "You are match three. I told him that about apparently over an hour ago. Yeah, it was one hour and seventeen minutes ago, and he said one hour and fifty minutes ago." All right, my roommate needs me to pick him up. I should be back in time, though, just a heads up. Uh, so, yeah, he's still away. Apparently, I need to organize my tournaments better because players just leave for one hour and 43 minutes and think that that's going to be okay. Uh, yeah, thank you, Moses. Thank you. Thank you.